investigation into allegations of misconduct involving women at his church. WGN's Megan Dwyer, live in South Barrington with the story for us tonight. Megan. Yeah, this is Willow Creek behind me. Uh, tonight they have what they call a forced family meeting, and their leader dropped a bombshell. The leaders of both our church and the WCA need the freedom to get on with the task of carrying out the important missions that God has given to them. Therefore, I have decided to accelerate my planned retirement date from October of this year to tonight. Careful not to call it a resignation, Reverend Bill Hybels announced today he's retiring effective immediately. He's the founder of Willow Creek, one of the nation's largest evangelical megachurches. I can say with all definitive authority that um, unfortunately what we saw here tonight is that we do have a man who is um, lying to thousands of people around the world. The move comes after a Chicago Tribune investigation disclosed Heisel's had allegedly engaged in inappropriate behavior with women in his church. I have gotten to know some of the victims. I've gotten to know uh, people that have been trying to speak out on their behalf for years. The allegations spanning decades included suggestive comments unwanted kissing, invitations to hotel rooms, and an affair. In a statement on Willow Creek's website, Heibel says he's been accused of many things he simply did not do. He says independent investigations have cleared him of any wrongdoing, and he's sorry he's been so angry in the weeks following accusations about his behavior. I do believe him. I was here at the first family meeting because there is just no way that Bill Hybels would have gotten on that stage and told us a lie, and looked at us and told us a lie. His sudden retirement tonight leaves a congregation divided but hopeful. Well, welcome to another edition of Christian Answers. My name is Pastor Jeff Short. Today we're going to be talking about something that was in the news last week. I think around the early part of last week, Monday or Tuesday, I was going through uh, getting ready to leave the house, and I caught on the radio a headline, an ABC News update, that the pastor of a mega church, Willow Creek Community Church, Pastor Bill Hybels, is stepping down due to allegations of inappropriate behavior with women. And I just thought to myself, oh boy, here we go again. Another scandal, another Christian pastor leaves because of inappropriate behavior. But in this case, I did pray, and I said, Lord, I pray that these uh, allegations are not true and that the church does not have to go through another scandal and that there doesn't have to be this ugly, sordid uh, news drip, drip, drip every day. Uh, the pagan, secular world loves to report about Christian failures and and scandals and disgraceful falls. So I was just praying, Lord, let these accusations not be true. And then later on in the day, I was able to get on the internet and look at the evidence and sift through and see what the issue was. Uh, to be honest, uh, I had never heard of Bill Hybels being under any investigation. Of course, I had heard of Bill Hybels, the pastor, because when I lived in uh, Illinois for 10 years or so, about 20 years ago, I had the opportunity a number of times to visit Willow Creek Community Church for church growth, church conferences, church workshops, seminars, you just name it. I can't even remember how many times I've been over to their mega church in South Barrington, Illinois, and I've been there for conferences, and they have a particular method of attracting unchurched people to their church. It's called seeker-sensitive model. I have some problems with some of the methodologies that they use. I have some problems with some of their philosophy and their tactics. And I have some problems uh, a little bit here and there with their theology. But uh, I have nothing against Bill Hybels. I'm not someone who hates uh, Bill Hybels or Willow Creek or Saddleback or Rick Warren. But I prayed a prayer that I asked the Lord that it would not be a scandal. Uh, this would not be a huge uh, problem for Christians and the church in the future in our culture. That's all we need is something like this. Well, after looking into the evidence and looking into and going online and watching hours, a couple hours of 
the Willow Creek Board, the Elder Board, present the evidence to the church, I have concluded that based on the evidence, I have to agree with the Elder Board of the Willow Creek Community Church that Bill Hybels, there is no evidence that Bill Hybels uh, was inappropriate or had any kind of sexual abuse or any kind of sexual uh, misgive, missteps or any kind of sexual inappropriateness with any women. I have to conclude that. And that is what the Willow Creek Community Church Board of Elders uh, came to the conclusion uh, three times. They had three separate investigations, and they've hired outside lawyers to look at this and sift through all of these accu- accusations. There are about four or five women that have come forward in the style of the Me Too movement. The Me Too movement is a secular social movement that's based on, it started in Hollywood, where some actresses began to tell of tales of sexual abuse and sexual uh, coercion and sexual inappropriate behavior uh, of people in powerful positions in Hollywood. And so the movement began as a sort of a whistleblowing uh, operation saying these people tried to get us to do this in exchange for parts and movies and so on and so forth. Something that people have always thought was going on in Hollywood, and here these witnesses and testimonies actually uh, confirm that it did, did happen, and it is happening in Hollywood. But that's, that's, that's old news. We've all heard about that. Now, the Me Too movement has been expanding, and it's moved on from just uh, egregious, outright, clear-cut cases of sexual intimidation and coercion and people in power using their positions to get sexual favors and that kind of thing. It's moved on from out the clear-cut objective abuse to now every woman is encouraged to tell her story or tell her impressions or share her feelings about any kind of relationship in the workplace that made her feel uncomfortable or embarrassed, or awkward. Now the Me Too movement is expanding and inviting every woman to ransack her memory to try to find any awkward, objectionable, uh, uneasy feeling that they've had at work towards some man, or some man's actions, or words, or looks, or gesture made them feel uncomfortable, and then report that as a case of abuse. And so that has now come to churches and it's come to the mega church. And so what you have here are four or five women who are ransacking their past history, their history of emotions, history of experiences in Willow Creek Community Church. And they're stepping forward and say, and I was very intimidated in this situation, or I felt uncomfortable in this situation or I felt this was inappropriate in this situation. And so they reported it, and that is the nature of these accusations. I kid you not, that is the nature of the accusation. In fact, some of the secular newspapers are with the headlines, what exactly did Bill Hybels do? And there was uh, the the most egregious uh, accusation came from a woman who said that she had a Uh, many-year affair with Bill Hybels. And then she recanted that and said, no, that was all a lie. I was mad at him, and I made up that story, and it blew up, and it got bigger than I thought, and and it got widespread, and I want to say I'm sorry, and I recant. That didn't happen. It's a lie. It's false. I was mad. I shouldn't have done that, and I'm very sorry. Okay, so that the big accusation against him was refuted by the person, actually, that made the statement. But, unbelievably, that accusation continues to make its round in secular reporting of this whole scandal. So, you have that accusation reported over and over again, even though it's been refuted. Makes no sense. Then you have some women who said that Bill Hybels, uh, when he hugged them, Uh, once or twice or whatever, uh, the hug was a little too long, and they felt that that was very inappropriate. And so on and so forth. You get these little 
petty, trivial impressions. And so uh, what, what we see happening today is the Me Too movement being pushed to extremes, uh, whereas you have a legitimate core uh, problem in Hollywood and big business and in other places, wherever you have men and women interacting, and that women should feel uh, that there is a place that they can go to report on these major and egregious uh, behavioral inappropriate actions. Yes, there definitely needs to be a forum for that. But if you are now going to ask women to go back into their entire adult history and report their impressions of their interactions with male co-workers, bosses, colleagues, etc., and report anything that they are feeling uncomfortable about or were confused about or were, were felt intimidated or awkward or anything negative, now they are encouraged to come forward and join the Me Too movement. That is an extreme and that is damaging. And I think we've already seen, actually in the newspapers, we've seen some feminists, actually self-described feminists say, hey, let's not go overboard with the Me Too movement. Because if we do, we're going to have men and women in work situations who refuse to interact with each other for fear of offense, for fear of someone accusing another person of inappropriate behavior. And so even feminist authors are beginning to raise a flag, red flag, and say, look, be careful how far you take the Me Too movement, because if you go far or cross a line with the Me Too movement, you're going to become, you're going to produce a toxic work environment where nobody wants to get close to anybody else. Nobody wants to uh, interact with anybody else because of the potential uh, damage that could be done if somebody falsely accuses them of something. And so we're seeing that here in Willow Creek right now. Now, the Board of Elders at Willow Creek, half of whom are women, as far as I can tell, the lead elder is a woman. Now, that's a whole other issue. I don't want to get into that today. Uh, it is my sincere conviction, looking at the Bible, I hold to the historic Christian position that God calls godly men to teach and lead in his church. He says that very clearly in the New Testament from the writings of the Apostle Paul in 1 Timothy. He talks about uh, that Paul, as the Apostle, teaches that only men are to teach and have authority over other men. Only men. So God, for whatever reason, it's his choice, it's his church. Whatever reason, God has chosen men to be the primary leaders in his church. So when you have an elder board that consists of around half of the elders are women, and you have the lead elder in the Willow Creek Community Church, a woman, you are, in my understanding, and in the classic historic Christian understanding, you are violating scripture. You are disobeying what God has said. He wants his church to be ordered. And so, Right off the bat, you have a non-biblical pattern of leadership. But having said that, and, and also having said that we're not getting into that issue today, that's another topic for another day, I think the elders in the case of Willow Creek Community Church, having looked at the uh, evidence and the facts of the case, they did a fairly good job of trying to get to the bottom of this whole situation. After all, they were presented evidence, they were given accusations of four or five women, some of whom were past staff members on the church. Uh, a few of them had been longtime staff members on the church, and they had put forth uh, accusations of inappropriateness. Now, there was not any, by the staff members, there was nothing uh, about any kind of 
sexual or uh, immoral uh, behavior by the staff members, former staff members. It was more inappropriateness. It was abuse of power. It was uh, uh, inappropriate behavior. And so these accusations had to be taken seriously. And it looks like Willow Creek Board of elders did that. And this process, as I learned, and I didn't even know anything about this process, has been going on for three or four years because these accusations came in around three or four years ago. So Willow Creek has sort of been under this cloud, at least the elders have been preoccupied with this sifting and sorting through the evidence of these accusations. And they've done one, not just one, but two, not just two, but three separate investigations on these accusations. Um, The last time with outside counsel, outside uh, investigative uh, counsel, uh, trying to help them uncover the facts, all of the facts. And in all three instances, they concluded that there was no merit to these accusations, that they were simply impressions. Now, one of the things that did bother me when the elders, the the lead elder, presented this finding to the congregation, and they had that last week, or no, uh, last month, they had a, a presentation by the elder board of their investigation to the congregation, telling the people that the pastor, Bill Hybels, was found not guilty of any inappropriate behavior. And before the elder board laid out their case, the incoming lead pastors, now Bill Hybels had already planned on retiring in October of this year, but he's decided to go ahead and retire early to get rid of this uh, cloud of suspicion and the preoccupation with these accusations that the church has to deal with, especially the elder boards have to be preoccupied in this. They can't get along and go on with the other work that the church is doing because they're all fixated on this issue. He says, I'm going to retire early, six months early. And so he stepped down. But the two pastors who are going to co-pastor the church, one is Stephen Carter. He's going to be the lead teaching pastor, and then the other is Heather Larson, who is going to be the actual lead pastor of Willow Creek Community Church. Now again, from a strictly biblical perspective, Heather Larson has no business leading a church. She has no business leading being the lead pastor of a mega church. She has no business being the lead pastor of a little country church. She has no business being the lead pastor at all, according to Scripture and according to the uh, constant teaching of the church for for nearly 2,000 years. But again, that's another issue, just like the elder board uh, with women on the elder board or the women uh, on the lead position on the elder board. Uh, That's another issue for another day. We'll get into that, and I'll explain in more detail And we'll look at that verse in 1 Timothy where Paul explicitly forbids that very type of activity. But be that as it may, Willow Creek has bought into the feminist movement early on, decades ago. And so now they've come to the point where they actually have a lead pastor who is a woman, Heather Larson. And I've given a a video presentation uh, about a couple months ago on the fact that Heather Larson is now the lead pastor of Willow Creek Community Church and how that is not a biblical uh, position that she is allowed to fulfill. But be that as it may, she introduces this whole topic to the congregation. And one of the strange things that she and uh, Stephen Carter talk about is they say, well, to the congregation, don't take sides. Don't, um, Don't say that the women are wrong or that Pastor Bill Hybels is wrong. You don't have to pick a side you can affirm both of their stories. And this kind of language, this kind of they can both be right and they can both be wrong, uh, don't take sides. And then actually Stephen Carter, the the teaching lead teaching pastor, used the term uh, embrace the dual narrative. It's just, it's just psychological gibberish. 
as far as I'm concerned. Of course you're going to try to find out who is correct and who is wrong. You're going to try to find out the facts. You're going to try to find out what is true and what is false. And this whole thing about embracing the dual narrative and you don't have to take sides and you don't have to say one person is wrong and the other person is right. You can say they're both right and so on. This is the language of psychology. This is not helpful. I think what the church needs to do is say, we're going to sift and sort and we're going to get to the bottom of this and then we're going to present it to you and we're going to show you who is right and who is wrong and we're going to deal in facts and we're going to be objective about this. We cannot go to the level of emotion and feelings because if you do that, then yeah, you can embrace both sides and say this is their truth. Another another phrase that I heard coming out of this uh, Willow Creek uh, Community Church meeting was that uh, some of the people were talking about uh, uh, some of the ac- accusations, the women who accused Bill Hybels of inappropriate behavior, they were saying, well, this is my story. And then Heather Larson said to the congregation, well, you can affirm those stories of the accusers, you also have to stand by your own story and what you know to be true of Willow Creek. Again, this dual narrative thing, you can affirm the accuser's story and then you can affirm Bill Hybel's story. This is psychological gibberish as far as I'm concerned. They need to take a more objective approach and say, look, somebody is telling the truth and somebody isn't. Somebody is misrepresenting the truth and somebody isn't. We're going to get to the bottom of it. We're going to present this to you and then we're going to move on. So I think that Willow Creek, one of the problems that Willow Creek is experiencing is that they have bought into some of these secular movements in order to be hip and cool. They want to uh, be able to relate to the culture. And so early on in the ministry of Willow Creek Community Church, they bought into the feminist movement. And early on, they embraced the whole false biblical, uh, false uh, notion, unbiblical notion that you can have women elders. And early on, they began to put women in the primary teaching positions in the church so that a woman will stand up in front of the thousands of people that gather on Sunday morning and begin to teach the Word of God to them, which is exactly what the Bible says should not be the situation, that the women of the church should not be teaching the men in the context of the assembled church meeting. And so they have departed from Scripture early on, decades ago, in that area, and now the fruit of that departure from the Bible is coming home, the chickens are coming home to roost, and Bill Hybels is being punished and accused falsely of inappropriate behavior by the Me Too movement that he also embraces. One of the comments that he made during the Willow Creek presentation of the evidence of these accusations was that he is all in favor of the Me Too movement. But then he went on and said, but if you look at the extremes of the Me Too movement, that is a damaging trend. And he's right. The problem is, if you invite the feminist philosophy into your church, if you invite the radical feminist philosophy into the pulpit of your church, if you invite the radical feminist philosophy into the eldership of your church on the uh, higher levels of leadership, then you can't just at some point say, okay, stop, we're not going to go with the feminist movement any longer at the church because this is too much. You can't do that. So you've already opened the floodgates, and now part of the feminist movement in our country and in the Western world is the Me Too movement. And part of the Me Too movement, it started with these egregious, behavioral, inappropriate actions by people in power, and that's a legitimate target. That's a legitimate accusation. But now it's degenerated and it's spread to the point where any woman with any impression of offense 
against her by any male colleague or male boss or someone in the organization. She is to run and report that, and that is to be an accusation against that person. And that is where the feminist movement has gone off the tracks. The problem is Willow Creek already embraced all, all of this feminist movement, and now they're not able to say no. And so the, the, the final part of this presentation, someone raised the question, well, what about this recent allegation by another woman? And the lead elder, uh, who is a woman, said, well, we're going to definitely look at that one again. We're going to look, not again, but we're going to look at that one and thoroughly investigate that. So again, you have this other accusation coming in at the last minute. And so now the elders, composed half of them are women, are going to be looking at all of these. It's a never-ending process because you're not dealing with objective standards of what is appropriate and what isn't appropriate. What are the rules What is crossing the line? We have not been told in society what those lines are, and we have not been told what is the definition of inappropriate and what is appropriate. And without any clear lines, it's her impression. It's her feeling. It's her understanding. It's her trying to figure out the motive of the person that she's accusing. This is in the realm of highly subjectivity, and it's going to tear organizations, it's going to tear churches apart. And so what is needed at Willow Creek is a factual, objective standard for these accusations. And for those that fall into the area of impression and feelings, and I think that this was the intention of my accuser and that kind of thing. Those need to be said right off front. That is not enough to condemn someone. Your impression of them, your your perception of them, your feeling of them is not enough to accuse someone. And that is what these accusations are against Bill Hybels. Bill Hybels gave credible evidence for every instance that his accusers brought forward. The board of elders at Willow Creek looked at those and concluded, yes, those are credible evidence that Bill was not involved in inappropriate behavior. And so the matter needs to be then dropped. But I'm afraid because of the churches bought it, bought it into the feminist and Me Too movement, they're not going to stop and it's going to continue on and on and on. And that's insanity. So we need to continue to pray for this church. We need to begin to pray for this pastor and for the people over at Willow Creek Community Church that they would sort things out in a godly way, in a biblical way, and that we all could learn from their mistakes, that we can learn from their approach to these issues and say we're going to follow the Bible's way no matter what, and we're going to follow the Bible's uh, instructions on picking elders, and we're going to follow the biblical way on dealing with offenses and accusations, and we're going to follow the biblical way of leadership and teaching. I'm going to do it God's way, and when we do it God's way, we avoid a lot of these problems that we're seeing at Willow Creek. Well, I hope that's helped you. We'll talk more about this issue as the facts develop. But have a nice week, and we'll see you back here next week on another edition of Christian Answers. God bless. Mm